First story is a particularly important one. We begin the broadcast with a hearty conversation, one that really should not be missed. Grab your papers and pens for this sec next segment. We're going to have a number of specialists here who are going to tell us how to keep your heart healthy. They're going to give us all the tips. But today we're not just looking at diet. We're understanding how to get all of the parameters, the data you need to understand how healthy your heart is and how to make it healthier. We're talking about lipid testing. We're cracking open the facts, everything you need to know, what lipids even are, why our body needs them, why it's crucial to keep them in check regularly, and most importantly, the new guidelines that have just come out. But before we go ahead, I just want to give you this base of information that our research team has found. The highest number of cardi cardiovascular diseases in the world occur in China, and right after that, you have India. In India, half of all heart attacks occur to people under the age of 50. I'm going to repeat that. If you're under the age of 50, that's actually half of the total number of heart attacks that our country sees. Last week, the Cardiology Society of India, we refer to them as CSI through the show, they released India's first guidelines on how you need to get tested when it comes to your lipid data. You're going to hear a term we'll use a lot through the show. It's the term dyslipidemia. It's the term that's used to describe abnormal lipid levels in your bloodstream. It's a predictor of different kinds of heart ailments and it's known as a silent killer. In India itself, the rates are particularly high. You, in fact, are supposed to have higher rates than even diabetes. And that's part of why CSI has now come up with new guidelines. Earlier, we used to operate on European standards, us along with a number of other countries. But the CSI found that there was a need for India-specific data. Over the last few decades, they felt there's this need. Now they finally come up with guidelines. And if we had to give you a summary, though we're going to speak to ex experts in just a second, if we had to give you a summary, essentially these new guidelines are testing and they're saying you need to more aggressively test, more ambitiously test, so you need to start younger than before. They're saying start at the age of 18. They've said set up a yearly reminder and they're just far, far more aggressive in terms of how often you need to do this. So, how are we going to go ahead and bring you the TBC breakdown? First, we've got a top cardiologist on the show to shed more light on this entire topic. So, how does testing work? How can you go about it? We have Dr. Sanjeev Gera, he's the director and the HOD, the head of department of cardiology at Fortis Noida. He's with us on the show. Sir, good morning. Welcome to TBC. Thank you for joining us bright and early on the show. Sir, let's just ask you first, Let's, because we really want to break it down for our audiences. What is a lipid, sir? So basically, uh, like other uh, blood tests, it is also a blood test. It is a panel of tests. Okay. The lipid profile includes uh, four types of cholesterol tests, actually. Okay. So in our blood, we have around four types of cholesterols. Like one is total cholesterol, then other is LDL cholesterol, which is also called a bad cholesterol. Then other is uh, another one is HDL. <clears throat> H means high, which should be which should ideally be high. It is called good cholesterol HDL, and then triglycerides. These are four types of basically molecules you can say in the blood, which constitute a cholesterol test or a lipid profile test. What we call lipid means fat. So basically, assessment of fats in your blood is called a lipid profile test. And these, there are two types of lipid profile tests. One is basic lipid profile test, and other one is uh, the extended lipid profile test. So extended lipid profile test, it includes some other additional things like lipoprotein A, which is actually a genetical marker for uh, high cholesterol or heart disease. Then other one is apo, apo lipoproteins like right. ApoB, apolipoprotein A. So some, some added additional modified tests to see whether a person is at a higher risk of heart disease or not. Doctor... It's a complicated topic and we are giving our TBC family a lot of data very early in the morning. So we're going to ask some simple questions too. You just said good, good cholesterol and bad cholesterol, if I heard you correctly. Why are certain cholesterols bad and good? So the, the bad cholesterol, which ideally should be low, it is called LDL. So LDL is a lethal cholesterol. What happens whenever there is high LDL molecules in your blood, and if they get oxidized by any insult, like very high blood pressure, very high sugars, smoking, pollution, pesticides, and so many unknown factors. If that LDL cholesterol molecule gets oxidized, then what happens? It starts getting deposited in your vessels, especially mm -hmm. heart vessels, leg vessels, and brain vessels. 
that can cause build up of blockages and ultimately heart attacks strokes and peripheral arterial disease when you have uh, pain in walking when whenever you walk there is a pain so this way there is some cholesterol deposition in legs also so that is why ldl is it is called a bad bad cholesterol because it gives you disease the other one is sdl which is actually you know counteracting the effects of ldl so what sdl does sdl is a good cholesterol ideally it should be high h means high what it does it it is basically a scavenger molecule so it takes away the bad cholesterol from the blood and just it takes it to, into the liver where it gets you know degenerated so it it's a it's called a good cholesterol because it is removing bad cholesterol from the blood so that is why these two parameters are very important whenever we assess the heart disease risk in any person okay doctor can we ask you um we shared data that was quite severe with our audiences right now and it essentially points to the fact that indians are more susceptible to all of these issues than others but why is that so basically there are you know, a few things which makes us more susceptible like we have genetic predisposition okay genetic predisposition means we have more incidence of heart disease like we have when we talk about uh, in terms of cholesterol so we have high bad cholesterol and low good cholesterol so whenever you see a lipid profile test in any indian so our good cholesterol values are always less below mm. 30 below 35 mm. even ideally it should be more than 40 and then uh, other thing is that we we are genetically disposed predisposed because our arteries are smaller than western population oh. so they are more likely to get blocked if you have high bad cholesterol if you have sugar the the third thing is that we we eat a very high carb rich diet our our diet is you know more Uh, more of carbohydrates especially refined carbohydrates very less of fruits very uh, very less of vegetables we hardly eat fruits every day uh, it is said that you have to have two to three servings of fruit and two to sure, three sure. servings of vegetables every day and the veg- vegetables should not be overcooked what we do we just burn our vegetables the, the other other thing is that we have high blood pressure and then we have you know there is less very less physical activity we are just we are not just working we are not just walking so that is that makes us indians pre, more predisposed to heart disease especially more of pre diabetes lot of sweets lot of sugars in our diet and lot of you know genetical predisposition for diabetes all, all these things and then high stress levels so all these things actually making us more prone to heart disease tell us dr gira uh, are we essentially saying that look because i just want the messaging to our family at tbc the the viewers to be very clear You're saying that we're all genetically predisposed, and the two ways to take care of it are healthy eating and exercise, and that's it. We are genetically predisposed to have high bad cholesterol, low good cholesterol, and there was one study which showed that if you lose weight by around 10 kg, then you can increase your HDL cholesterol by five wow. points. Okay. So weight also has an effect. If you are if you are obese, though these people have low good cholesterol and high bad cholesterol so weight also matters lifestyle also matters along with our genetic predisposition so if you check lipid profile or when i i see lipid profile in our my patients in india so good cholesterol is always on lower side very few people they have a very high good cholesterol so that that is why it makes us more prone for heart disease doctor just tell us because the reason we decided to do this story was because the cardiology society of india has come out with new recommendations how are these and this is the first time you have india specific recommendations how are they different from what the country was operating with all of these years so basically you know, what they have done lipid association of india they have categorized patients into four categories like low risk category moderate risk high risk and very high risk okay so they there is there are set of parameter which define whether this patient goes into this category and that category sure so if you have like if you have diabetes or you, if you have a smoker if you are a smoker if you have family history of heart disease heart attack or any procedure or any stroke then you are into very high risk category then the threshold for lowering of bad cholesterol is ideally it should be less than 50 they they say it should be less than 50 earlier it was less than 100 in a diabetic patient only diabetes then the ldl cholesterol the bad cholesterol should be less than 70 so they, they, they the guidelines initially were they were a bit more flexible but last last decade when we have witnessed that there there are a lot of premature deaths lot of right. premature heart attacks younger people coming to us with every type of cardiovascular disease uh, say it like 
or heart attacks or strokes or peripheral artery disease then we they, they decided and it is it is based on data actually so they have now recommended that uh, the, the bad cholesterol the ideal cholesterol should ideally be less than 50 the lower the better and good cholesterol should be more than 40 in males and more than 50 in females that is the guideline actually Doctor, before we let you go, one last question for you. For everyone watching right now, if you could almost speak to all of us who are watching it in our living rooms early in the morning, what's the biggest change you want to see India make? The single biggest thing, change is basically lifestyle modification. We should hmm. be more exercising, weight loss, low fat diet, less carbohydrate diet, more of fibers in our diet like vegetables and fruits, no smoking, less alcohol, less of sugar, especially refined sugars. Ultimately, weight reduction. BP reduction and uh, basically sugar, average sugar level reduction actually help us, you know, reducing uh, uh, the incidence of heart diseases or any other cardiovascular diseases. That is the most important thing which we should focus on. Doctor, thank you for taking out the time early in the morning to lay that foundation for us. Okay, we're now going to go over to the testing side of this entire story. So, if you need to go to a lab and get a test, as it's now being recommended if you want to start at a young age, if you're 18, 19, what's the entire process? We have Dr. Samir Bharti, he's the director of Star Imaging Path Labs. They have been around for 20 years now. Let's go over to them to understand more about this entire process. Dr. Bhatti, uh, tell us, let's just go to the first question. When it comes to the big changes between the previous requirements and now, one of the big things that our audience might remember is earlier you had to fast for 12 hours. Now that requirement has been done away with. What's the logic there? Is there new technology that doesn't need fasting? Just explain to us. Right, so uh, there is not any new technology because, uh, you know, in lipid profile, there are six or seven parameters. So the LDL, which we are targeting, you know, mm. which is the main culprit cholesterol level and the HDL, the good cholesterol level, right, are not that. altered by fasting. I mean that non-fasting sample can be uh, taken and uh, that is, you know, quite uh, good uh, readings i mean we can obtain to uh, for our treatment management only mm. triglyceride level in the blood increase after having a meal and for the last few years researchers have been uh, looking at the benefit of non fasting triglyceride levels and the theory is that for the most of the day uh, levels are what they would be after meal so a sample oh, okay. taken without fasting uh, could be useful and uh, earlier we taking the fasting samples uh, I mean, if uh, you have a family history of inherited cholesterol problems, then I think in that particular case, fasting samples would be preferable. But they are a very uh, few of the patients. So in that case, we can check the fasting samples. And in case, uh, mm. I mean, uh, if uh, we find abnormally high triglyceride levels, so then we can take the fasting samples. But uh, what I feel, I mean, uh, a non-fasting test uh, can be more comfortable uh, for the individual and maybe safer for the people uh, who are having the diabetes. Right, it was a 12-hour window, I believe. So this will make it more accessible. But can you tell us, Doctor, your lab has been around for 20 years now. Uh, before we look at the new guidelines, just tell us, this particular set of tests, what was the most common demographic that was coming in for it? Yeah, so what we have noticed, like, I mean, this is an underutilized test oh, parameter. Okay. Hmm. So, individuals in their 40s and 50s uh, are getting themselves screened, and very few in their 30s. Only and only chronic patients who are already having uh, some heart or stroke issues or who are already on some medications. But I don't think so. This test is uh, being used for, you know, preventive purpose. So, doctor, they say now that you can start at the age of 18, I believe one article actually said that if you're old enough to write a CV, you're old enough to get this test. How do you see that change? Yeah, so in India, I mean, what we have noticed because our, uh, of our genetics, we get metabolic disease 10 years early, heart attack comes 10 years early because of our, you know, vessel structures. 50% uh, of the heart attacks 
uh, in India below the age of 50 and 20% of the heart attack below the age of uh, 40 and the other risk factors like diabetes, blood pressures comes in our population much early. Uh, so uh, this is a good scientific approach to managing dyslipidemia, high mm. cholesterol uh, with a focus on managing dyslipidemia uh, as early as possible. And so in, uh, in that particular case, aggressive treatment can be done and the high risk individual uh, can be, you know, screened much early uh, before, I mean, we can say 80. Can you just tell us, I, I know a lot of articles are also saying that you can start younger than 18 also, but 18 is kind of the minimum recommended age. So just tell us how young can people actually start, especially if they do have a family history of this. Uh, they can start at the age of 14 or 15. Oh, okay. So you're lowering it even further. Just tell us, doctor, before we let you go, because you're someone who's looking at the pricing all the time, we looked into the prices, of course, but I think it would mean more if it came from you. How accessible do you find these tests price-wise? Yes, yes, yes. It's quite uh, accessible nowadays. I mean, uh, it is included in all the preventive health packages. Uh, and uh, it is quite affordable as well. I mean, this sample, only a single blood sample can be collected uh, from your office or from... Oh man, this test is easily available in all government hospital and in small cities too. So it is quite, you know, accessible and affordable. Doctor, thank you for joining us. Of all the stories that we do, this is the one that perhaps has the most impact on your health. Do get tested. If you're watching this right now, do get tested. Encourage your family members to get tested too. Of course, on TBC, we like to say be healthy, exercise. But more than that, go out today, get your test, understand your lipid profile. Coming up.